Intersectionality, an LGBTQ plus perspective. Now, looking at the first half of this whole subject here, this is quite a concept dealing, of course, with a lot of people, and that is intersectionality. Now, looking at the concept in its entirety, well, what is it? Coined in 1989 by American civil rights activist and leading scholar in critical race theory, Ms. Kimberly Williams Crenshaw. In its entirety, it is a social theory, meaning it has to deal with you, people around you, and you as a whole society. It highlights the need to account for multiple grounds of identity when considering how the social world is constructed. Crenshaw originally implemented her theory when approaching issues surrounding women of color, such as domestic violence, issues that deal with race, gender, and financial background. She started to see overlaps between these ideas, overlaps that she went on to call intersections. And these intersections explain how an individual can face multiple threats of discrimination when their identities overlap a number of minority classes, such as, but not limited to, race, gender, age, health, and sexuality, and of course, as I've said, there are so many others. This is where the LGBTQ community comes in, with all its rainbow. The LGBT community has many different identities. Just, just look at all those letters. LGBTQIA+, and so many. Of course, outside of the community, there are so many other identities as well. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that the LGBTQ community has something beautiful, something called diversity. But it also means that the LGBT community gets grouped together. For the LGBTQ community, intersection intersectionality explores how the movement takes on a single identity and in consequence acknowledges a specific set of struggles, many of which coincide with the, uh, wait for it, majority heterosexual experience. Now let's look at the gay rights movement that is often called upon to speak for the wider LGBTQ plus umbrella. Uh, the face is usually considered white, cisgendered, able-bodied men and women. Now all of these identities here are great, they're amazing, but me Please solidify that being any of these identities is completely okay. But it also means that other identities are forgotten. For example, LGBT Asian Americans or LGBT people with physical disabilities might be forgotten and their goals, like changing laws for better health care or job discrimination protections, may not be achieved because of a lack of attention. Now, in order to explore this, let's take a look in the media. Let's explore something that we are all very familiar with, and that is, of course, your daily homey television. Now, as far as television goes, there are shows like Ellen and Will and Grace that manage to give a perspective into the LGBTQ plus experience. These shows ultimately helped portray the LGBTQ plus community as a singular and approachable identity. That means that LGBTQ starts to look happy and it starts to look peaceful. And it continues, of course, 
But now let's look at it through a more closer look and perhaps law. It manages in minimizing the hatred and political backlash of LGBTQ plus friendly court rulings. Hmm. Well, let's explore something else here. Let's look at film. In 2015, there was a nice little film called Stonewall. Sounds familiar. Stonewall introduced the character of Danny, a gay white man who served as, of course, the protagonist. And I guess he served as a sort of catalyst in the movie, a, a bomb maybe. Danny was the first person to throw a brick in the film in order to trigger the riots. But, hold on. The first person to have thrown a brick has historically been recognized as a transgender woman of color. What does this mean exactly for the representation of the narrative and who participated in it? Her name was Marsha P. Johnson. In fact, 13,000 individuals signed a petition explaining that the film, well, its protagonist, it managed to serve a couple of grievances. It whitewashes the movement, promotes heteronormativity, implements the white savior narrative, and disregards contributions that trans women of color did for the movement. Now, in the media, there is a face, in fact, to the whole movement. And that is white, cisgender, gay man, and the occasional woman. Well, according to scholar Lisa Detmer, the race and class divisions within the LGBT, LGBT movement lead to single issue policies like gay marriage. So it seems that we are a little focused on the rings. For some, in fact, LGBTQ plus is gay marriage. In fact, it's, it's, it's the whole rainbow for them. But the fight for the whole movement is bigger than that. It deals with finances and gender, the workplace, housing, healthcare, education, and so many other ideas that aren't always at the front lines of the whole movement. Detmer also explains that in the past, the merge movement has taken funding away from other critical needs for queer people such as healthcare for trans, lesbian, and bisexual women, and funding that affects poor lesbians and trans people through clinical programs. That's a lot of problems not seen in the movies, or at least not most of the time. Now let's give it a Latinx perspective. Let's look at a study done by Ms. Cristina Chavez Duarte in California State University, Long Beach. She completed a qualitative study. Her subject, undocu-queer Latinos. The term undocu-queer was devised by the National Immigrant Youth Alliance, NIYA, in order to serve as a political identity. Uh, well, undocu-queer individuals encounter the simultaneous impact of being a triple minority by being an ethnic minority, a sexual minority, and holding an undocumented status. That's not one, not two, but three levels of oppression. Now let's look at the study. It included seven individuals. The criteria, ages between 18 and 40, undocumented, undocu-queer, Latino, Hispanic, and currently reside in California. Now let's look at the results. All participants, 
which means seven, perceived the support from the Latino community towards their undocumented status to be more positive than towards their LGBTQ identity. All participants, all seven, discussed experiencing internal homophobia because LGBTQ issues were never a part of the household or community. This were due to reasons of being Catholic, conservative, traditional, and cultural established gender roles. Those are some pretty stiff rules. Now, each part participant described on occasions that one of their identities was more prevalent versus the other, which meant that who you are and who they were allowed to be was depending on people around them. This introduces the idea of even double coming out, which means that not just your LGBTQ identity, but all your identities get questioned. So, well, how about it? Are intersections real? Are there problems that impact members of the community differently? At the very least, it can be said that humans are complex. That's, yeah, about, yeah. <laughs> Who are you? Chances are, you are many identities, just like a normal complex person. And the whole world is pretty big, nice and blue. How does that impact how you function in the world?